So first we're going to uh, explore your reactions to this, uh, this role-playing activity. Uh, so what did you guys think? Oh, overall, was this, was this easy or hard? <laughs> yeah, and, and I think, you know, again, returning to the idea of sort of meta thinking about our, our activity, you know, this is, this is why we do it. I, I think that it's really important to have an opportunity to not just see this language sort of put up on a PowerPoint screen, but also to have the opportunity to, to have it, see how it feels when it comes out of your mouth, because there's some times that you're going to be like, mm, no, that's weird, that, I, I can't say it that way. Uh, I think it's, it's really important to be able to, to practice this stuff so that uh, you can use it in real life. So what did you guys think? What are some of your reactions or some things that you learned from doing this? Let's start with the uh, attendings. What, uh, how did you guys feel in the, the attending role? It's challenging to point out someone's deficiencies or perceived deficiencies without maybe being accusing or persecutory, putting, framing it in a positive light. Awesome. So how did you, how did you deal with that? What, are, what kind of language did you use? Did you feel like he avoided making you feel bad about the, these deficiencies? Awesome. So a return to, to kind of some of that coaching model stuff of just asking a lot of questions and, and trying to get to root causes of issues rather than being like, you should have done this and you should have done that. How about some other groups? some of our observers, so our faculty observers, was there anything that you guys noticed that helped these guys have this conversation in a productive, non-threatening kind of manner that you saw them doing? And I think some of that is, is really knowing your learner too. Um, you know, we have learners in our residency who need really direct feedback. I need you to not do that exact thing anymore. Uh, I, we can't do that in our shift. Whereas other learners are like, you know, if you try and give them feedback like that, you know, they might have imposter syndrome, they might have a variety of other things. Like you need to couch it a lot more gently of like, hey, next time could you consider maybe thinking about it this way instead? So I, I think it is, it's a, it's a challenging and, and subtle topic trying to figure out how aggressive you want to be with like, okay, here's, here's where we go next. I think another challenge that happens with us sometimes is in our program on weekends, the residents are 12, and most of them are kids still. So you'll end up in scenarios that this just happened not too long ago for me where like, I have to give feedback to this resident on this encounter that happened. But they're in the middle of their shift as I'm leaving mine, and I cannot leave this bomb to finish the rest of their shift with. At the same time, Absolutely. So and I always encourage, it's like every feedback, any evaluation my resident gets, you should have talked to him about that before you sent the eval. So I'll like, I, I held this eval for like a week so I could finally have a conversation with the resident before they saw it in their inbox. Yeah, 
timeliness is so important so that people can actually connect it to the actions that they, they did. Otherwise, it starts to get a little hazy really quickly. If you don't know, new innovation, send your evaluation to the residents. <laughs> as soon as you send it, they get in their inbox. So, so maybe let's talk about some of the cases individually. Uh, who had case A? Did uh, anybody? OK. Uh, so I guess attending, how did you? Uh, you know, go into thinking about this? What, what was kind of your mindset as you went into the case, and then what did you kind of find out about your learner? And I'll just summarize their case just for everyone else, because you guys all had different cases. So pretty much his learner had pretty poor efficiency, um, wasn't able to get their task done, and they're in the end of year G1 coming up to G2 year. So he had concerns about their ability to function in that G2 role. Going into it, my mindset was I wanted to kind of get it in the frame Awesome. I think that sounds like a great approach. And I really like how at the beginning you're trying to assess whether her perception is the same as your perception. Because if it is, then you just go on. If it's not, then you have to do some level setting to get her to where you are before you can go anywhere else. And, and student, what was your uh, perspective on this? Uh, what, what were you kind of thinking? What, were your, what was your kind of scenario? Yeah, it's like a really humble approach of like, okay, well, maybe there's something structural here. How can how can we help? Uh, how can we bring more to bear? But I think it gets to to Jason's point as well of you know thinking about what is the the appropriate time for this feedback. Maybe when somebody is at the end of a long stretch of nights uh, and they just need to go home and sleep, that isn't the right moment for feedback. Uh, maybe it's not something that's quite as you know. Uh, bombish or time critical. Maybe you can write them an email and say, "Hey, here's what I thought went well. Here's what I thought could improve for next time." And you know, they can read that later on their own time. Because I think thinking about uh, those issues of not just timeliness but timing of feedback uh, really important. I think you're so good. Sometimes you didn't leave enough time between the event for your emotions to calm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> The steam has finished coming out of my ears. <laughs> All right, who had case B? All right, a couple different folks yeah, who had two groups had case B. Case B. Uh, all right, so uh, attending, um, what were you thinking going into this conversation, and then how did that change over the course of your conversation? Um, so yep. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's wonderful parallels to medicine here in, in education. Uh, you, you can't proceed with the right treatment until you understand what the diagnosis is because if, you know, it turns out the real cause was a wellness issue that she was missing details, well, you know, the, how you're going to proceed forward is, is going to be totally different. So uh, uh, how about, uh, Lerner, how did you feel uh, going from your place of, you know, maybe not that much insight to being guided by your uh, faculty member to, uh, to this place of, of mutual agreement? Sometimes 
major <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so I thought she did a really good job just like stating, like, you know, I noticed on this patient that we we got, you know, different information. You said she was on short stress. When I talked to her, she did. Do you, you know, how did, how did we get there? And it wasn't like accusatory of like, uh, you lied, which was what happened. But <laughs> <laughs> she let me say I lied. And so as opposed to, because like there, because I think if you approached it that way, you could end up putting your foot in your mouth. You know, as as the you know attending, if it's like, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Like she was adamant she had no shortness of breath for me. Um, right, it's so a very I different think, conversation. Right, and so and then that's really different. Like, okay, maybe we need to like maybe then it's about like what questions did you ask or how do you elicit that information, which is really different than you know. Then she was able to be like, oh well, it's totally fine to say I don't know. Actually, I would much rather you say that and go get the information than. That's awesome. And it sounds like the, the questioning, that, that sort of advocacy inquiry approach worked really well in this yeah. case. Awesome. And how about KC? Who is KC? You guys? Uh, so yeah, tell us a little bit about your case and how you approached it as the attending. Yeah, so this is kind of that wellness check that you guys mentioned earlier, right? It turned out to be a wellness issue with a sick family member. How did you as the learner kind of feel about the conversation? Yeah, I had a hard time like putting that information out there without just like giving it up. That's what was in the prompt. Uh, he said, oh, is there anything that may be going on? And then that was my prompt, but there was a multifactorial things going on. Um, so I kind of gave him a little bit of information at a time. Mm -hmm. So we'll just to wrap this up, we'll kind of go through the, the main take homes that you guys have and these are all in the handout as well that you'll get. Um, so those brief in the moment ones, we're having clear expectations using the rhyme uh, technique or, or um, methodology of reporter, interpreter, manager, educator, using advocacy inquiry. You can do it either in the moment or as part of your guided metacognition that we've been talking about. And then remembering preparation for your longer conversations using that SOAP mnemonic, thinking through that ahead of time building your educational alliance, then you can do your guided metacognition. And then remembering like in your case, right, you involved a program director or made that an option, right? So maybe escalating or using other resources. Maybe it's, you know, your employee assistance program or other institutional resources are also options. Thank you guys. <laughs>